Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Lincoln Riley, the USC Trojans, set to hold a very exciting recruiting weekend this weekend on campus as they're set to host a lot of top prospects in the 2025 and 2026 class. Want to talk about some of the names that have jumped out to me and also have that conversation of what recruiting is going to look like for USC in this 2025 cycle. You bring in pretty much completely a new defensive coaching staff and I think you're going to see, one, different kind of players being prioritized by this USC staff, and more importantly, different areas of the country as well. I want to talk about two things. One, some of the players that as I've dove in to this 2025 cycle, some of the guys that I really like as targets for USC, and more importantly, have that conversation regarding what USC wants to do and what areas of the country and what kind of players USC wants to attack in this 2025 cycle, before we get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys. And as always, a shout out to the USC fans, whether it's the transfer portal, whether it's high school recruiting, I always have a blast talking this program. I always have a blast talking this program with you guys in the comment section, all the fight ons, that stuff. It means the world to the boys. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into this one. And I want to start with Chuck McDonald and the reason I want to start with Chuck McDonald is one, dove into his film, really like his game, but more importantly, modern day kid. And many of the, the USC listeners who've been listening to me for the last couple of months kind of know I've been banging the table for Lincoln Riley and this staff to really clean up the backyard recruiting. You take a look at that 2024 cycle and having guys like Aiden Breeland at modern day, Zabian Brown, Kingston, Villiamo, St. John Bosco, all kind of slipped through USC's fingers if you're a USC fan and you're looking at USC to kind of get back to where it belongs, I think it starts with cleaning up the backyard recruiting and taking a lot of these talented kids from modern day and St. John Bosco and keeping them home. And so if you're USC and you're Lincoln Riley and you're this staff going into this 2025 cycle, I think it kind of presents an opportunity, especially going to the big 10 to continue or kind of restart this USC pipeline with modern day and St. John Bosco. You look historically now, when USC is acquiring the most talent, getting it going on the recruiting trail, I mean, it starts with those two schools. They consistently put out top talent, and you want to make sure that pipeline is strong. And does that mean you're landing every single kid at Bosco in modern day? Certainly not. But you want to be landing a majority of those kids, and a lot of that top talent, USC should be first on that list. And so landing a guy like Chuck McDonald would be huge to kind of reestablish that pipeline. Now, you talk about Chuck McDonald, what he brings – to the table, diving into his film earlier today, a couple of things that I really like. One, I think he can be an elite nickel cornerback at the college football level. And that's primarily where he played at modern day. Cause you look at that modern day team, Xavier Brown on the outside five-star cornerback. There wasn't much opportunity to play the boundary as a junior for Chuck McDonald, but man, did he look so at home and so comfortable in that nickel spot. And Two things that stood out. One, the physicality. When you're playing that nickel role, you have to be coming up and run support, making sure you're tackling in space. He certainly has that really developed frame at six foot, 180 pounds. But more importantly, the short area quickness for Chuck McDonald, I think is truly special. I mean, his ability to break down the football, mirror wide receivers in that slot. That's what makes Chuck McDonald so special. And I think that's why I love him as a nickel defender. Now, that's not to say he can't play that boundary role because you take a look at the traits, six foot, 180 pounds, has that ideal frame that you want, also runs an 11 second, 100 meter dash. So you take a look at the frame, the long speed certainly could translate to that boundary spot. And we'll probably have to take a look and recheck in with the senior year film in terms of, is he playing more than nickel? Is he playing more at the boundary? But a guy that I think would be very good as a boundary safety as a nickel defender, or even as a box safety, because again, he's developed and he's physical. The next guy I want to talk about, and again, 2025 class, you want to be able to go into Texas. And I think USC has done a very good job of this going into Texas, going into Florida with Jason Zandamella, going out and getting Cam Fountain from Georgia. USC has done a really good job going nationally and grabbing talent from other areas of the country. Chad Woodfork, very, very exciting edge rusher. And the reason I want to talk about Chad Woodfork, one, USC needs these kind of bodies on that defensive line, right? We, we've talked about where did USC struggle from a personnel standpoint. You want to see USC, especially going into the Big Ten, be physically capable and ready to handle it up front. 
And a guy like Chad Woodfork excites me for a couple different reasons. One, you turn on the film, elite burst, elite get off. He's a guy that has the length, has the burst, and has the frame to put on weight, right? At 6'4, 220. Again, he's only a junior in high school right now. A guy that's sought after by teams like Georgia and for good reason. Taking the visit to USC, this would be that ideal body that you want as an edge defender that probably gets up to 240, 250, gives you elite defense in the run, but more importantly, some juice off the edge in terms of getting after the passer. Chad Woodfork, again, a reason he's a top 50 national prospect. Now, one last guy I want to talk about in the 2025 class that really excites me, and a guy that I think is kind of just under the radar because I, when you look at running backs at the high school level, you want the guys that are going to consistently take it 80 yards to the house, right? Deshaun Ford is not that type of running back, but he is that running back that, as a Michigan fan, watching Blake Corm for the last couple of years, you grow to appreciate. Those hard running backs that really invite contact are able to fall forward, have really good contact balance. That's what Deshaun Ford represents. And he's not, not to say he's not a guy that can kind of hit that big play. He runs an 11.8 meter dash, which is pretty good for someone at 210 pounds. Maybe not that elite breakaway speed, speed, but a guy that, I mean, having the conversation of turning a, a second, second and seven into a second and five, turning a third and five into a third and three by falling forward, by taking on contact, that's what made Blake Corum so special at Michigan. And I think, it, again, it's kind of an under-had conversation, but when you're able to get some of those hidden yards and fall forward and be physical, that's those type of running backs are not necessarily the flashy objects, but the running backs that really help offense to stay on schedule and establish that run, I think that's what Deshaun Ford brings to the table. Just a muscle hamster, right? Thick lower half, takes on contact really well. I think Deshaun Ford fits exactly what USC is looking for in terms of the physicality moving into the Big Ten. Now, the last guy I want to talk about, and hopefully you guys stay to the end because this is probably the priority target that's going to be on campus for USC. Now, he's a 2026 kid. He's a sophomore in high school right now number one player in the country, and for good reason. Jakeem Stewart coming from Louisiana. What excites me about Jakeem Stewart is not only he's the number one player in the country, but for USC, these are the kind of bodies we need, right? 6'6", 270. When he steps foot on campus to whatever program he goes to, probably going to be 310 pounds. You turn on the film as a sophomore in high school, just physically imposing. And it's so rare to see sophomores in high school be that physically kind of mature. That's Jakeem Stewart, right? 6'6", 270, a ton of length in his hands. He carries 270 exceptionally well. His burst off the football for somebody his size is incredibly impressive. Now, he's raw. He still needs to learn the sport of football to an extent, but a guy that you can't really – God don't make him like that, right? They don't make many like that, I should say. Jakeem Stewart is really kind of a truly special specimen, and I think, uh, again, you look at what USC wants heading into the Big Ten – it's those kind of bodies on the line of scrimmage. Again, he'll be a probably 310 to 320 when he steps on, on campus. Like he's only a sophomore in high school. When you watch his film, he looks like he's a 22-year-old 20, 20, kid. Like he is an absolute force to be reckoned with, a kind of body USC wants. Another guy that if you're a USC fan looking forward to the future, this is a top target for USC. And the fact that he's getting on a plane and going out and checking USC across the country I mean, tells you that USC is in this one in his recruitment, really excited to kind of follow this program over the next couple of months and get more of a feel of who USC and what kind of players USC is prioritizing on the recruiting trail. We'll continue to keep you guys updated again. Appreciate all the support you guys have shown. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel and we'll talk to y'all later.